Hey, it's Cairo. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I am here with TGN. If you guys have looked at many of the live streams that have happened over the course of the last, I think it's been probably three years from now, you will notice the name TGN as the channel moderator. He has talked to many of you guys in the live streams and kind of our levels of cards and whatever. And we're here to talk about uh, Lost Caverns of Ixalan today. TGN, how are you, my man? I am terrific. You're doing good? Looking forward to Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Yeah, it's going to be a great set, I think. I think it probably change, will be. Change some things. Change some things, hopefully, because over the past, like, six to eight months, man, I think, even maybe even longer, things have been pretty... You've seen a lot of Wandering Emperors. <laughs> You've seen a <laughs> lot of Shieldreds, right? A lot of Black, yeah. So yeah. there was there was one thing that you were super pumped about seeing as a reprint in the new set, and that's Resplendent Angel, right? Oh, yeah. Because oh. not only you've been a fan of angels for a long time, but you have you bought the secret layer for angels. You're pumped about that, and you've played angels for a while. So, like, what do you see for? Let's pull up Resplendent Angel for anybody that doesn't know. This is a reprint, right? Do what set is this originally from? Yeah. Do you know? Uh, I think 2019 is uh, where it first debuted, um, and it has been a staple for angel decks in any legal format since. Uh, it's big in commander. Obviously, you can see the secondary price on it. It's it's uh, pretty steep. Yeah, so it looks so it's double white, one generic for a three three flying angel. Beginning of each end step, you gain five or more life this turn, create a four four white angel token with flying and vigilance. And then it has this ability of triple white three generic. It gains plus two plus two and gains lifelink. Obviously a very cute like little thing to to make it basically uh you know, if you don't have the life gain, you can independently, if you can get a hit in with it, you can make yeah. yourself an angel. So it it will be a bomb in limited. Yeah, it seems like it's going to be, and it seems like we have a few. So, like angels, I think if you correct me if I'm wrong, but I think New Capenna, like right after that, with the release of Giada Font of Hope, and what is the the angel with kicker that's Mardu? That's for uh, a vengeant oh, angel yeah, the, or something the, like that. Yeah, yeah, the archangel. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> It's gonna be good. The Mardu yeah. is already in the domain decks. Um, yeah, it's good. I mean, <laughs> it's a good card. I, I think that. So we we've seen like with the rotation of uh, Zendikar Rising, that three drop angel, the like Righteous Valkyrie, right? So we haven't seen much of the life gain. Like when that rotated, it was just like gone. But I think this yeah. could fit the three drop that you need. So you can go like turn two Giada. Turn through Resplendent Angel, give it life, you know, like uh, gain some life, make yourself a, a token if you have some life gain in there somewhere. Well, you 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 have the one drop cleric from um, one of the Anastrad sets. Uh, sorry, it's uh, eluding me right now. Oh, let me let me figure that out because I know what it is. It's Anastrad. When another What's creature the... comes in, you gain a life, right? Yeah, yeah, it's the human cleric. And so you got that for turn one, then you got Giada for turn two. Lunark veteran. And then you can roll in with turn three, or you got Blessed Cleric that you're going to be able to play. Um, and then you can also consider those two angels. You know, you got Steel Seraph. Oh, yeah. And you have Resplendent Angel. Um, and so, I mean, given that, so this looks pretty well positioned, right? Because given that mono red is a massive player in the format right now, right? So especially standard best of one. So as we know, versus mono red, if you can gain like seven life <laughs> during the course of the game, like you're, yeah. pre you're pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gain life is very bad for mono red, right? It's, uh, that's it doesn't matter if you do much if you just gain life that's yeah pretty bad because then like i'm gonna lightning strike you to death and you're like that's cool because i i'm gonna not only i'm gonna bring you you're gonna have to bring me from 32 to zero instead of 20 right yeah i think resplendent angel will probably be pretty good and it's a mythic rare but uh yeah i think it's pretty good so that another bomb. <laughs> that's a bomb. And limited, I mean, yeah, and limited. It's crazy just because it's it's a three drop, three three flyer. 
And then if they don't deal with it by turn, you know, six, you have that activated ability that just continues to make angels. And we know removal and limited is like there's far less of it, right, than constructed. Sure. So I think right now the price, well, you're right about core 19. Then the price of it is $27. And it's looking like, you know, certain versions of it in uh, Ixaline are like 35 bucks right now. Yeah, yeah, it didn't get the, um, it didn't hit the secret layer. It hasn't sit, hit a secret layer, and um, it just has not be re, been reprinted to death. Yeah. So many other things have had that, and this is a card that people want, and it is absolutely a bomb. This is this is this is a good one. I'm excited to see it. I mean, uh, the thing I like about it is it's self-contained. So you can say, okay, well, there's life gain. If, you, if you're if you in constructed, you can do a life gain deck. But then if you're in limited, you're like, well, if I just get, if I play it on turn three and it doesn't die, I just I hit people with it and then I just make angels later. Yeah, yeah. That's the cool. raw stats are good. Uh, <laughs> it's good. Yeah. That's a good card. Yeah. All right. So another card that I was actually excited about that I want to discuss with you and get your take on is Masters Manufacturing. Uh, excuse me. Well, oh, that's the backside. The first, the, the front side is Master's Guide Mural, and it's an uncommon. So I like to sometimes talk about uncommons because they're not as clear cut. Like you know, if you have a mythic rare or whatever, you're like, oh, it's really good. But sure. uncommons can be either really bad or really good. And so this is a five mana artifact. But when it enters the battlefield, you create a four-four white and blue golem artifact creature token which is kind of cool for the standard meta right off the bat because as you mentioned with steel seraph and stuff like that one of the big removal spells is go for the throat which is if I'm, unless i'm mistaken go for the throat is non-artifact creature right yeah yep so they will be tempted to get rid of your token but then it's like no it's an artifact and that which we've seen that's a big theme in um Lost Brother. Caverns of Ixalan, and yeah, and and Brothers War, as you mentioned too, which we'll get into in just a second. But it also crafts with an artifact, and it costs seven. So, but it's it's a five drop, um, and you can exile this artifact, exile another artifact you control, or and I think here's the like actually the the part that made me go like, oh, okay, I think this is pretty good, or an artifact card from your graveyard, <clears throat> meaning you don't have to control. <laughs> yeah two artifacts you just have to have one played sometime but, but you know before turn five or six or something if you have the mana especially with uh if you have a like a little bit of ramp or some some mana rockers or, or a, a treasure token or something like that and then it will transform into master's manufactory which you can tap to create a four four white and blue golem artifact creature token not only even once per turn Activate only if man if this or another artifact enters the battlefield under your control this turn, which is kind of like that's yeah, pretty good. It's sort of easy to do, like by turn six or seven, if your deck is built around it, bringing artifacts in. Like you mentioned, you know, there's there's plenty of artifacts that are kind of hidden. Sure, you know, there's brothers clues. war. Brothers war is strong. Has Urza has all those power stones that have been underutilized. Um, there's some card draw synergies there. Uh, there there's there's going to be things that can be done. Or what about the dude that gets no love whatsoever? Uh, Tezzeret. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kamigawa yeah. Neon Dynasty. Let me see what he was doing. I'll put him up on the screen. I, so he's... Does he tokens, make... He goes crazy or something? He makes he doesn't make artifacts, which is like kind of what this needs. But he he animates artifacts into four fours. Yeah, so he maybe he's not the greatest for this, but as you say, I mean, he still works the power stone stuff from Urza. Yeah, but as you so you could have him in there. You could have uh, the Urza from the Brothers War. You could have any removal spell that creates a power stone token on top of it, and. Uh, Goes, hold on just a second. What's up, baby? A few moments later. We got Twilight Sun makes artifacts. Mirex makes artifacts. Oh, you do it. So that's what I'm saying. That's a good synergy right there. Because Mirex 
this is a <clears throat> a card that seems to me to be you know it's a five drop to make a four four and then get a payoff so it's definitely not an aggressive build but Mirex that's that good TGN know-how that Mirex bring that token in that's an <laughs> artifact artifact came under control tap that make a four four golem you, I think yeah I think you, you're good to go you got what Takasia's welcome yeah um there there's there's a lot of synergies to be had with just making things and i think uh, this is a synergy that's been long overdue like you brought up brothers war and i think everybody that was around with when brothers war was released was like okay I get these power stone tokens but i don't really have over. anything to do with them yeah yes yeah. so, uh, and sorry we also have unearth so there's that synergy where you could like self mill, you could find some options to do that. And you could graft or you can unearth things. So like there there's options. It's just giving you outs to play. That's true. What's that soldier? There was a there's a one drop soldier that was played in unearth that um is an artifact creature. You know what I'm talking about? Look that no. up real quick. Offhand, I can think of the four drop or three drop that makes another one, and you, you, in limited, it was it was an absolute bomb because your board state just gets unruly for other people. Uh, you go wide. Oh, Pretty Yo good. Yoshin Frontliner. Oh That's yeah, the... yeah, 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 and it was in the soldiers. That's right. Yeah, and so you could. I mean, it's it's plausible that you it's could bring option. this in. Yeah, it's an option. You could unearth it. It comes into the battlefield. It's an artifact that enters the battlefield. Then you tap that thing to make a four four. It's like it's a, it's an interesting card, and there's definitely a lot of options. And what we're trying to highlight here is a little bit of the lost caverns of Ixalan cards that aren't like that that could bring um different art archetypes to life. Sure, yeah. right, that's, and definitely that's, like that's one. Some <laughs> failed ones, or not necessarily failed, but. Things that didn't get much love. Yeah, like yeah. Things thing. that failed to launch. Yeah, and and you know you bring up that soldier, and that's great because if you're going to run control, you know, say you're running what is it, sunset, um, sunfall, the oh. eggs, everything. Yeah, that creates an artifact too. So like, you're going to need chumps. <clears throat> that's another thing. It does create an artifact. It creates an incubator token, right? Which is an artifact. Yep. yep. So you kind of, yeah, because it's a five drop as well. So you could Sunfall, no, no, no. You'd have to Master's Guide Mural, have your 4-4 four, four Golem that comes in. Maybe you can use that to like chump block, get rid of something, you know, some 4-4 four, four thing. And then you could Sunfall and then craft it with another artifact and then and then have that come in and, and make yourself a token. Yeah, it's not there's bad. Plenty, there's plenty of builds around that. I think. I think it's, it's a, not bad. That's uh, 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 could be an overlooked uncommon. It easily could be a very excellent uncommon. I agree. I think it's like when I opened it, I, was, I just did that pack opening for um for the channel, and I was just kind of like, I'll open this pack and see what cards are good for standard and what good what cards are good for limited. And there was a, there was a few cards I was like, no, it's too too expensive to whatever and that one actually caught my eye so i'm glad we yeah, discussed yeah. that one has a hell of a payoff on the backside. <laughs> <clears throat> it does it's good it does especially if you have something that's like create a clue token every turn like uh what's the what's the dude from march of the machine uh denik so if you flip denik he's azorius too if you flip denik and then something happens where he creates a clue pretty good i mean you you could run Red with it and uh, run the three, and you get the planeswalker that makes the thopters too. Uh, That's true because those are she's, artifacts. She's seen some play in Pioneer already. Uh, so you so, like like Jess guy? Yeah, could translate. Could I don't know? We have Monk too. I mean, <laughs> they, there's there's lots for Jess guy could could blow up. So let's like sort of transition over here to number three. Uh, and that is a planeswalker from this set. As we know, Wizards of the Coast has said, like basically there's too many planeswalkers. Yeah, yeah. That are that are happening. And I guess War of the Spark was the last set where they had like tons and tons and tons of them. But 
I kind of agree with what they're saying where they're like, listen, it's too easy to just make a deck full of planeswalkers. We've seen it, right? In Esper. It still does well right now in uh in standard. It's not maybe tier one, but it's definitely strong. If it yeah. curves out, it's horrible. It's it's hard to overcome. Yeah, I mean, so it's kind of like a no-brainer. And, th- and this goes with something that they've said about, you know, they want to get back to different types of decks where it's, it's a specific type of aggro, it's a specific type of control, or it's based around artifacts or whatever, instead of just like choose three colors and make the best three-color pile you can, which we've kind of seen with Grixis over the past year. Sure. So, yeah, it's a similar thing with Planeswalkers, where it's like if they have three or four Planeswalkers a set, like you can just go, okay, let me go um, Esper, and let me go Liliana the Veil, vale, let me go Wandering Emperor, Soren, let me go, uh, what's like a good five drop? Well, you could do the other white ones. You could do like uh, the well, new. Well, you get the other Emperor, and it's just devastating. Yeah, the other Emperor, and then you can do Vraska as your six. And you're just like, okay, if you don't stop me soon, I'm just going to overwhelm you with Planeswalkers, tokens, and whatever. So there's only one new Planeswalker in Lost Caverns of Vixalon, and that is Quintorius Cond. Originally the uh, from the Strixhaven universe that came out a couple yeah, years he's ago. Yeah, one of the, one of the uh, kids there. Yeah, and he's he wasn't... Student. It was from the lore hold lorehold school which is red and white which had a lot to do with like graveyards and exiling things in history so we have uh he's a five mana boros planeswalker he comes with four loyalty when you cast a spell with exile from exile he deals two damage to each opponent and you gain two life plus one to create a three two red and white spirit creature token minus three to discover four and tgn i'm trying to remember here discover means look at the top four cards put a land into your hand if you don't find a land then you get some no. plus. okay which one is that that's, that's explore that's explore let's explore is discover the uh it's sort cascade? of cascade light yes okay that that makes a difference because i was originally thinking like okay this is going to get you lands or whatever but it actually that's does make a difference dog. Dog scratching. Sorry, guys. It depends. That's all right. It depends on what you hit. Because five mana minus three to discover four. If you hit a four drop wandering emperor, you're pretty happy. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. He, he, he can escalate your board state, <laughs> um, which is good. That's that's not nothing. That's pretty strong. But he costs five to get out there, which is hard, right? Like, which is the difference between four and five? can't be overstated because yeah, like let's yeah, yeah. think about if the wandering emperor costs five right that would be still good but not nearly as good as costing four. four yeah yeah so four on the play or even on the draw when you flash it in it's <laughs> it's pretty good it's not a board wipe but it definitely busts momentum and then it escalates right because people tend to back it up with a board wipe yeah or especially if they if they're tapped out and they have a few creatures coming in and you can do the mine the uh make a two two and block oh, yeah. their two two yeah. and then exile something next turn it's pretty brutal but i don't know so i think either you go turn five you put this down plus one three two red and white spirit creature token. You have one blocker for it. You have to have maybe something before that to protect Quintorius. I mean, if you discover four, what happens if you whiff on that? Like you draw I, into some sort of like I don't know. You're in Boros, so I guess you could draw into a lightning bolt or not a lightning bolt, but lightning strike. No, you're right. I mean, whiffing hurts. You whiff on collected company. You whiff on what Winota. <laughs> Those yeah. are devastating. And I think it's the same kind of thing. Whiffing can happen, but you 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 build these things thinking it won't happen too. Right. So. yeah, and let's talk about it. it's Boros too, right? So Boros is aggressive. It's not to say that it can't be controlling, because there's definitely Boros 
blink stuff and there's there's things that can happen with red board wipes with damage based board wipes and stuff but i think let me know what you think about this but i think you take quintorius cond and you make it instead of three in boros you make it three in orzov you start to like it a little bit more uh, yeah um the only thing it gets with boros is it does trigger the celebrate mechanic with the last set right because you're gonna drop it and then you're gonna if you do the discover you're gonna pull out something else hopefully and you're gonna trigger those celebrate so if you've got the mice down if you've got uh garrick down you're triggering those and those could be win cons the problem is though are you really wanting to play that on turn five? <laughs> if you're right. running aggro, eh, I don't, I don't know if you're going to be winning much. Right. And then, and then it seems like there's these planeswalkers where they have, I see your point. It's like, well, it can trigger the, they can trigger the celebration. But like, again, if it was four, right, we see, a, well, we, we would see us putting it, let's say it was four and the plus one was make it two, one. It would be terrific. Yeah, or let's say it was three mana and then plus one to create a two one and then minus three to, to discover two. Like, that would be pretty brutal. Yeah, it's going to hit the celebrate mechanic. It's going to be great. It's actually going to fit in really nice with with the, with the last set, right? Um, I yeah, don't I know. At five... And and the the uh the static ability here when you cast a spell from exile deals two damage to each opponent and you gain two life, that's not terrible, but it is definitely wanting to be built around. It's not a just straight off the cuff good planeswalker like we've yeah. seen. What comes to mind is the best five meta planeswalker that I've seen in the last few years is Lolf, but sure. which is a totally different planeswalker than this, but it's just. It's just one of those yep. things where it's like, okay, I have to build my entire deck to get value from this. I have to exile cards using Ren's Resolve or uh, the other one where it's like I cast two mana and exile a bunch of stuff or uh, Felden, right? Right, and you're right about the trigger, right, with the exile thing. Okay, if you're trying to get that, you're probably running a control build and... Is Boros the best control build you can run? I exactly i agree and it would be like even something like just guy like how many cards are how many cards can you exile yeah from you're, your you're, hand right are you trying to loot every turn i i don't know I, now it, there is something to say with adventures though that we just saw with oh sure wilds of eldrains because those you're casting from exile so there could be something there i don't know if it's going to matter in standard right like I don't know. Maybe the uh, red, um, what is it, virtue comes to mind? Where not only does oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, where the source does more. Yeah. Yeah. But you can kill something early, then drop Quintorius, then play that, and then you can kind of go off, you know? Yeah. If you, you could make a burn deck really around that stuff. Um, yeah. Unless they have a splendid get... angel. <laughs> you also get the uh, <laughs> lifelink guy that's Boros. Who turns all instants into lifelink spells? Yeah, um, from the last set. That I don't know. Um, it it is a card that I think people should be cool with and happy with. Does it see play in uh, a format? I, you know, I yeah. Don't know. Commander, you can do so much stuff, and you can have so much fun. Even brawl, right? Yeah. Are you gonna get to play it in, in standard and win a lot? I I don't I struggle. I struggle. I, I like I think it. it. It's I cool. think it's just the, the question you ask yourself is do you do you find yourself playing Quintoria? Do you want to play Quintorius in a Boros sort of aggressive, even sort of mid-rangey deck on turn five? Or do you have something better to play or something better to do? And I don't know, because you're your turn five make yourself a, a spirit, and then by that time, I mean, then it's turn six. How much is a 3-2 going to do for you? You know, you could hit I mean, you could hit some nasty stuff with the Discover 4, though. I mean, if you're running control, I guess, right? But, like, what the hell are you doing running red? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't... Yeah. 
right? Like running control, a three, two, if you've got it all locked down, that's fine. Like it's not fun, but it is fine. Yeah. Uh, we've seen it before. <laughs> we've seen some small bodies beating you down. So all right. So let's talk about one more before we end the meeting and end the uh the pod this this sort of precursor to a podcast if the subscribers like it and uh yeah. they think we're not just talking that mess you know this is one of the rares that i think we're both kind of excited about even though it's hard to be excited about rakdos <laughs> ah, ah. right now oh because... <laughs> man oh man no, no. this is horrible this, <laughs> this this spell is unplayable rubbish and everybody <laughs> should just send them Send you them should, right here. yeah. If you're a Rakdos player, don't play this, especially against our soldiers and aggressive builds. Just don't do it. No, nope. just send them to me. I will collect them. Yeah, it's fine. We'll we'll, it. we'll put them right in the trash. We'll just put them in the trash. I got a shredder. I can put Perfect. like Perfect. ten at a time. I mean, I fine. will blend them up and drink them. There you go. I did that. <laughs> yeah, it made you a mythic player every month. Man. It made me mythic. I drink uh, red card smoothies to get mythic every month. Yeah, so perfect. this is Molten Collapse. Excuse me. One black, one red. Sorcery. Choose one. If you descended this turn, which is a new mechanic from this set, basically means if a permanent card was put into your graveyard from anywhere. So that means if you're one of your creatures were killed, one of your um, you sacrifice something, you can choose both instead. So it's sorcery for two mana, destroy target creature or planeswalker, which I thought was like pretty yeah, generous to put planeswalker on there for two mana sorcery. Like yeah, it's not an instant, but it's awesome. And you can destroy target non-creature, non-land permanent with mana value one or less. And we start to think about this and like TG and I, were, we saw this card and we're sitting there and we're like, well, how many things that actually hit? And then we're like one mana enchantments, one mana artifacts, one, you know, one mana, there's no one mana planeswalkers, but I'm going to well, start, go ahead. In Pioneer, man, that's porthole. Like you're running Cat Oven, that obnoxious deck. And now you've got this that can just smoke, you know, your mono white deck after it's um, it's sideboarded out and it's running all the ports. Yeah, they're locking you down. Now you can just blow them out because also you're sacrificing things, so you're descending. Oh it yeah, sure. Nasty. It is nasty. It is nasty. And then in standard, like you got the the pioneer, the cat oven uh, angle on it, but on in standard. You know, there's some auras and stuff that have been generated from Wild yeah. Well Drain with you know exactly. yeah. monstrous rage, things like that, things that make uh awesome point because the yeah. mono red runs runs the heck out of that right now. And if you can get it on turn two, if they got a Kamano faces Kakazan, that's a that's a one mana enchantment that turns into a two two with haste and every as we know, every little damage point of damage counts versus mono red. Yeah, yeah. It, so it's going to be great because it syncs up really well with the Rakdos vampire, the uh, blood token sacrificer. It uh, links up well with the Omnixus from uh, what new Capenna yeah. who sacrifices things makes you like you're, you're already descending the beginning of that turn. And it just, there's, there's synergy there. Yeah. Uh, not to mention, um, Oni Cult Anvil, you know, Anvil? something yes. like that. All those. So if you have Anvil, Obnixilis, all that stuff in that deck, it's like, well, you're you're descending every turn, right? You're Her you are. Herbrast Forge. <laughs> yeah, Herbrast Forge too. You're sacrificing <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, yeah that's, I think that card's. Uh, it's it's something that could I see Rakdos going back to tier one i think so i think it's strong enough as removal that um it, it just gives them more tools right it makes it more flexible against more more uh decks right like so yeah because uh, rakdos is like right on that edge right now if you put you can build a pretty damn good rakdos deck if you just kind of Throw you're gonna throw Blood Tithe Harvester in there. You're gonna throw Sheoldred in there. Turn three, maybe you're 
you're doing obnixilis or maybe you don't you just do go for the throat some cut downs a little bit of you know um what else what else that's, that's pretty good i mean we, i mean we and then the anvil, we had the forge there 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 there's options you know, what are we missing? Mirror breaker? Well, thank God I got banned. Because, like, <laughs> That's what I was saying. So I was, I was drawing a blank there because I'm like, turn three, what's it going to be? You know, like, uh, yeah, my go ahead and make a I'm token like... and then attack, get a treasure token, <laughs> sacrifice that, blow out a couple things. You're good, man. You're good. Can you imagine that with mirror breaker? Oh my God. Fable of the mirror breaker. The funny thing about that was like us included, right? We, I mean, we were into, I was into content creation when Neon Dynasty came out. And I was like kind of looking at cards and thinking about what would be good. You know, I think everybody knew Wandering Emperor was going to be phenomenal, right? You just see it. You're like, wow, that's that's crazy. But like Fable the Mirror Breaker took t- like two or three weeks. And then I think people, you know, there's a little bit of a buzz on it on Twitter. People were like, hey, this card's like pretty damn good. <laughs> And it took a while. Yeah, I remember, you know, like all those, uh, the other uh, like value machine wedding invitation, right? Like, yeah, I didn't uh, announcement think, uh, wedding announcement. I always I do that. I always do that. I didn't think that was uh, nearly as good until I got it limited. And I think I remember telling you like, oh, man, <laughs> this thing kind of <laughs> went off. Yeah, uh, this is pretty good. Yeah, because you know, at the time, based on what standard looked like, those things didn't necessarily look like they were going to blow anything away. And I know that Mirror Breaker, well, when the set came out, you know, that card, it was not that expensive. All the pros even undervalued it. Uh, you know, um, it's good. It's very good. It had yeah. to go for a reason. It's a very, very strong card, you know. So do we see any any potential Fable the Mirror Breakers here in Lost, Caver- uh, Lost Caverns of Ixalan that we are just, like, undervaluing? Uh, my answer so far is kind of no. Think about Fable the Mirror Breaker. Think about that card. Is it self-contained? Right. It right. requires no synergy. It's just, like, you just play this on turn three, and then it's, like, autopilot. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Value. You know, the thing is, you didn't have to do much of anything first couple turns. Um, yeah. And you'll do okay. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Um, I don't necessarily see anything with the new set doing that just yet. I saw a na- – actually, you linked it to me. There's a nasty in the uh, Caverns of Ixalan uh, commander, that Charismatic Conqueror. Oh, oh that yeah. That thing's yeah. a nasty. Yeah, um, and that reminds me, we're going to get the um, – the Orzhov caverns, or is it Orzhov? Whatever it is, the caverns that makes creature spells uncounterable. Oh, That's gonna be uh, good. Cavern of Souls? That's going to absolutely, I think, smoke blue tempo. Um, other than that, I I don't know. I, I It's going to wreck that, that deck, I think. Uh, Probably. I mean, they got the... That, the haughty gin that comes down but their main thing is like versus tempo as long as you can go wide and get things on usually good like they can fade and hope yourself but like they can't stop you yeah yeah you're gonna like smoke their make disappears pretty quick and that's gonna change some things uh you know that card's good um it's a great needed reprint it's not i don't think it's a groundbreaker you know i I don't know that aggro got anything like really crazy, but I don't know that aggro needs anything really crazy. No, you're right. I, I, it just needs to do what it does, right? Yeah. Um, All right. Well, we got less than a minute on our recording here, so if we think that this podcast, uh, we'll call it a podcast, is going to be successful, subscribe to this channel, like the video if you enjoyed it. We want to see more. We'll upgrade to Pro and we'll have even longer episodes. But for now, I appreciate TGN for joining me. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. And we are going to see what happens with Lost Caverns of Ixalan when it comes out probably in, what, a couple weeks here? But until that point, 
we'll have more spoilers and more uh, content on Cairo MTG. All right, dude. Adios.